Hello everybody, welcome back to my television review series. Today we'll be discussing Narco Season 2. So I believe, yeah, yeah, this is another Netflix original. I broke down Season 1, again just about Colombian uh, drug trafficking, specifically Pablo Escobar and other relevant players of the time. Uh, so we'll give you again, I'll give you my overall grade and impressions. I will then, if you have not watched the season and you'd like to, you should shut off the video after when I when I tell you, or after again when we start the plot synopsis. So we'll be discussing major plot developments and character development and major themes. Um, a ten episode season, each episode about an hour, just very standard for a show. Getting back to the longer episodes from the uh, Never Ever I, Never Have I Ever and um, Mo, which were just uh, shorter shorter seasons. So. Um, again, overall impressions, I thought it was well done. I certainly like the historical, uh, historical elements. Again, your typical crime show for me is, can certainly do very well, but any, any sort of, even, you know, you get the initial screen at the beginning of each episode, you know, it's based on, uh, true events, but some things might be dr dramatized for, for entertainment. So, again, not super, uh, understanding of how exactly true it is, but I'm assuming it's relatively true <laughs> um, but so anytime you have a crime show based even on historical elements you still you still get me a even if it's not just a crime drama it's a crime drama with some history in it so that that, that boosts up the, uh, the 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 ranking for sure again anything with history in it I certainly certainly better than just a even a honestly but certainly better than just a well-done fictional show but it, in general gives it a boost for my ratings as well so I thoroughly enjoyed it I thought the production was done well. I thought the narration is again narrated by D. Age and Steve Murphy. It's not overly narrated. I thought the theme, I thought like the tonality was nice. I thought the again just like the like the actual like makeup and artist like the, the the violence in the in the production was well done. So again, with the historical elements, crime drama moves along well. I will give it I'll keep it at an A minus. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Think it's really well done, and and highly recommend. So if you want to go watch Narco Season 2, um, you should turn off this video now. We'll be discussing plot synopsis and character development. So, the end of Season 1, you have the big shootout at La Catedral, I believe is what they called it. And there's some special prison Pablo built for himself. And so Season 2, and I did not write down anything for this season. So I'll be, I'm sure I'll miss some minor plot developments or even medium to major plot developments. Just going through the stuff that I remember and overview of the season. But so they escape, big shootout there. Um, uh, Pablo escapes with a good amount of men. A lot of his men get whacked. Um, but basically, they just like the he just like walks past the guards. So again, a small small battalion or small regiment of the Colombian soldiers have him surrounded. And he's basically he still got some men with him, a good amount of men with him. And he's basically like, we're just gonna walk past, and that kind of what happens. And so he gets back. He escapes the Lacate draw uh, interaction. I believe he might he might flee the country for a little bit, um, but I think he does flee the country for a little bit and then he comes back. But he takes it as you know ch having a, chasing a man out of his home, like again like, yeah, like me for like, the past three apartments I had. <laughs> but um, he takes the uh, chasing chasing somebody out of his home as, as an act of war. So again in season one we had the the the, the airplane bombing. And so in season two, he's certainly just more of a, a pariah to the Colombian people and the other narcos. So another big kind of development, you do have like Pacho in season one, but you get, um, and the Kali cartel, but they have a lot more presence. They kind of, they kind of form a, well, we'll get to that. So Pablo comes back and he's just doing all out war, having people just light up the police. Um, later on in the season, he drops like the, the biggest bomb he can get Bombas as close to the, the presidential palace as possible. Basically, throughout the season, Pablo wants um, his family to have safe, um, safe, safe tra uh, travel outside of the country. And so, in this season, I just have an old government hombre. So again, I don't know the structure of the Colombian government, but in addition to the president and some sort of republic, but they have another character in that plays a pretty prominent role in the season, which is. There's like this older dude who's like some, some part of the Congress or something, but he starts looking into uh, Javier, or President Gaviria, 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 as like, how did Pablo get out from the Lacate Droll in, in, incident? 
And so the, this old government ombre is kind of like looking into Galeria. And so just a function of the Colombian government, I don't know. And so basically, I think he leaves the country for a little bit, or he just goes to another place in hiding somewhere. Um, but then, well, I guess that's not till later. So what, what I, the, the other kind of narcos kind of form like a pack this season. So you have a Yudi Moncada, you have a Don Berna, you have the Pacho, and he has two partners, and they're, they're like the Cali cartel. But then once, once um, Pablo starts killing innocent, a bunch of innocent people, killing a bunch of uh, police people, making business for real, uh, real hard for everybody, everybody kind of forms a, a group called Los Pepes against them. Also, you have the Los Castaños, which is again, like they're like a guerrilla group. So you have the narcos who kind of enlist these guerrilla people, the guerrilla Los Castaños people. Their, their father was killed with, um, by communists. So they kind of, again, there's, always, there's another a slight, you know, 10% influence of the communist time of the era. Doesn't really play a big role for the plot development of this show. So the Los Castaños, Moncada, Berna, Pacho, and the, his two partners, they form Los Pepes, which is just like some acronym for people against Pablo Escobar. And so basically, um, Pablo hits, has a bo bombs, um, one, of the, one of Pacho's partners, um, like daughter's wedding. So now you just have Pablo literally killing everybody from the Cali cartel he can, Cali cartel literally killing everybody from anybody associated with Pablo they can. And so after, that's, after the bombing of, of the partner, Pacho's partner's daughter's wedding, that's when Los Pepes, I think, really, really solidifies. And so they just based on what Pablo did at all costs. And so what happens there is you have Javier Pena, again, who's an American, Colombian native, but an uh, American citizen. And they're down in Colombia working with the local Colombian authorities. And so once, once the, um, the, the killings of the police really start, they bring Colonel Carrillo back. I, don't, I think he's just sent out of the country for his protection or something, or maybe go serve somewhere else. Um, but he leaves at the end of season one. They bring him back after the first couple episodes in season three, or season two, excuse me. And now they're starting to get dirty as well. So Carrillo, um, with, uh, again, Carrillo, native Colombiano, is, is kind of uh, just wary of uh, Steve Murphy. But Steve's like, you know, I'm in it the whole way. So they go there, they round up some of the people, like the spotters, the people, there's a big ambush on police. And so they, uh, Carrillo rounds up a lot of the spotters, who are again, like nine to 17 year olds. And so he lines them all up. He's like, you know, tell, to like probably the oldest one, maybe like 15 to 17 years of age. He's like, you know, he's talking back to Carrillo and he's, you know, he's like, what would be scared, be scared of little shit or something. And, you know, he's like, no, and then kills the kid. So you have the, the Colombian government whacking at whacking a kid. Um, and again, some of, like, some of the other Colombian government people saw that. So did, uh, so did Murphy, I believe, not, not Pena. But basically, Carrillo gives a, another little El Nino, a little boy, uh, a bullet and says, give this to Pablo and say it's for him. And so again, Pablo's still kind of in hiding at this point. Throughout the season, he's pretty much in hiding most of the season. Um, but ends up, again... The, the little boy goes back to Pablo, he gets Barrera Velez to do an interview, again, always showing, you know, basically, even though Pablo is this big murderer, his big thing throughout the season is, you know, pinning, he wants that safe, uh, no extradition for crimes, he wants safe travel for his family, and, and he wants the Colombian public to know that Los Pepes is kind of in cahoots with um, the Colombian government, which is true. Javier Pena is feeding and there's another uh, minor to major role uh, actor who they, 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 they do feed um, information to Don Berna and they, um, uh, the, the Los Pepes show up at a lot of scenes and kill the uh, Pablo's dudes before the police can get there. So that is kind of true. And so after Carrillo kills the kid, uh, another kind of development happens. You meet, a, there's a new person this season called Limon. And he just like basically Pablo needs a new driver, and so Limon is kind of knows La Kika from back in the day, who's Pablo's number one Sicario, and Martiza is Limon's friend. So basically, he has Martiza drive. Um, uh, Pablo like sits in the back of a taxi, 
and Mar Martiza drives around the city to get, so he can still move now that everybody hates him. And that, and then uh, she gets paid off a little bit, but again, once you start working with Pablo and you need to tie up loose ends, Martiza is worried about getting killed throughout the season. So Limon becomes a pretty, you know, third guy in line pretty quickly, but he's, he's like a, a main protector of Pablo throughout the season. And so what was that that had relevance to uh, the, the little kids or something? But basically, oh, the, so once they're feeding them information, Limon feeds Martiza false information, who gives that to Pena, and that's when they set up and they kill a bunch of uh, police officers, including Carrillo. So Carrillo comes back after a couple episodes, and he is muerto pretty quickly. Pretty qu rapido, muy rapido. So no, no more, <laughs> no more Carrillo. So now Martiza gets paid by uh, uh, Pablo substantially, and that comes into play at the very end of the season. But after Carrillo, you know, no one's really, no one's really excited to take the, the job up again. But you have Colonel Martinez who steps in, Martinez, Martinez, and his son Lieutenant Martinez is on the force as well. So basically, there's just like some historical relevance of no one wants to take the job. Um, Lieutenant Martinez, the son, the the Colonel's son, has already enlisted to be in the the, the 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 search block is what they call it, and that's what Carrillo was heading. And you know that's how the son is already in the uh, in the search block. So Colonel Martinez decides to take the job, kind of kind of warily, knowing that he's going to be he's going to be on the chopping block of Pablo. And so that happens. The and they they run the search block throughout the season. Connie Murphy goes back to Miami or wherever she's from in America. They don't break up. It just just gets too it's just too violent and risky. I think they kill her cat. That might have even been season one. But Connie this season is back and she's not she's not doesn't play a major role. Gabriela, and he's he's the president. After all of the killings, there's there's no negotiations and he wants um, Pablo dead. Some of the military guys and. Other other heads or you know big influences in the Colombian government want to capture Pablo for uh, trial and, and Gabriela just wants him dead. So Fernando Duque this season, yeah he gets killed. He is the he is the he's muerto as well. Um, he is the lawyer for Pablo trying to do negotiations um, with the government. And again, once the Los Pepe's find out who's anyone's helping Pablo, they get whacked pretty quick. So that's really what's going on. Um, after the interview, after the interview, Valeria Velez, which was also, uh, you know, an, uh, Pablo's having an affair on Tata with her in season one. But after she gives an interview to Tata, and she is killed very quickly as well by Los Pepes. So she is now muertoed. Um, Los Pepe's kind of, kind of, sort of break up towards the end. Well, basically, what happens is towards the end of the season, Pablo goes into absolute hiding, like they haven't heard from him in a while. So basically, he's going. They're going to war with the Cali cartel. They load up a bunch of. They buy about a hundred men. The government gets onto it, and the government pulls up and kills all all of Pablo's guys. So at this point in the game, also uh, La Kika, he gets. Well, right before they're going to go to, go to all-out war with the Kali cartel, La Kika is sent to pick up some extra money with two dudes, and basically decides like, yeah, I'm out, sure, I'm not, I'm not, no honor amongst the thieves. But he kills the two dudes he's with. He's going to take half a million and just dip out. It seems like. But right when that happens, the the police come and arrest him. I think they might kill him. They either kill him or arrest him. And Blackie has already been picked up at this point in the season as well. So La Kika is either dead or in jail. I believe he's dead. I can't remember. But look, they did. I just can't remember. But another, uh, so Blackie gets picked up in the season. Lakika gets picked up in the season. Um, Limon and uh, Pablo are driving to the to the load up or to the like where they're gearing up to go go on, go attack the the Cali cartel. And it, it, I couldn't. It, I don't know if there was just like a code or just nuanced Spanish there, but it seemed like you know Pablo and uh, La Kika had just like some sort of you know either code word or just code saying or like buzzword or like password to like say that he was picked up. Because I think I don't think it was I don't think it was nuanced Spanish, but I think when he asked La Kika to pass the phone to somebody else, 
and he says something back. I think that's that's exactly when Pablo knows that Lakika is is in custody. And so again, they try to leverage Blackie and Lakika's phone to to get to Pablo. And so another big development: Ermilda, Ermilda, Pablo's mother. She wants to go. She wants to go to church one day. So she goes to church with one of the men, and right when she comes back, that there's a, a firestorm of bullets, and the whole family gets shot up. Her brother Carlos has, um, that's Tata's brother. I don't know if it's Carlos Escobar, but in the Escobar crew, which is uh, Tata's brother, um, she he gets killed in that firefight. And so now you have the whole Escobar family on the run as well. And I think they're all, all, all together at this time. And then after, after again, something happens and the, the Colombian government picks up uh, Tata and he has Juan Pablo Jr. and uh, Manuela, I believe is the daughter's name, and Ermilda go basically into productive custody in a hotel. I forget what it's called. I forget, I forget what it's called. But so, like, for the, a good amount of the season, um, those four, after the, that firefight, this isn't in order, obviously, but they're in protective custody. And once, if Pablo doesn't surrender, they're going to lose their protective custody, which they end up doing. Throughout the season, they do try to, Pablo sends Tata and them to Germany, and it's a whole thing, but basically, the, the German government's very lax on immigration, but um, the... Steve Murphy kind of like, you know, there's currency in the bag, wasn't sure if there was, but knew uh, Pablo would send her with money. But, so they get denied at Germany and sent back to Colombia. So, um, so that, that's kind of what's happening. And then we get to the, the finale of Pablo Escobar. And so they, they have, again, they have this like little, this little van thing that picks up the phones of these like secure, secure comms channels or whatever they're communicating on. And so, uh, Lieutenant Martinez, he's on the, his, his father, the colonel, they have some, they have some heated exchange with the Los Castaños, or the, the El Pepe show up to one of the scenes, and Lieutenant Martinez almost gets into a firefight with the guerrillas, and Colonel Martinez puts him on, like, desk duty effectively, but he goes to just analyze the, the radio frequencies. And so they have a false flag, they think they get Pablo. Pablo's with Limon. They go to his father's for a little bit. Who, uh, he's only there for a bit. But he, Pablo and his father, fa Pablo's father does not respect him whatsoever for being a murderer. Ermilda, his mother, is with him till it was with Pablo till the end. So that's the first you hear of Pablo's father. But there for a little bit, working on a farm for a bit, um, and then and then Pablo and his father have it out a little bit, and then Pablo leaves. And so they go back to Medellin, which I thought it was I thought it was interesting. Uh, when I see when I see M E D E L L I N A Y N Medellin, and then they call it Medellin, like Medellin. So that's kind of interesting. If I if I read that in Spanish, I would say Yin Medellin, Medellin, Medellin. But I don't know Medellin. That might just be a, a local Colombian thing for Spanish nuance. I thought that was interesting. But they, uh, so they go back to Medellin, 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 who cares? And, uh, and it's just, it's just him and Limon. There's a false flag. Lieutenant Martinez thinks he picks up Pablo's voice on the thing. And it's a signal that's bouncing off the water. So there's a false flag. He gets some, gets some pushback from the other, other soldiers for that. But then, oh, Leon, Lion. Lion is also the... The, the Cali cartel kind of takes over, that, that was Pablo's big importer in Miami. They kind of take over his connect and then kill him. So he's muerto. <laughs> Sorry, I like saying that. But, um, so Limon and Pablo are in the city and uh, Lieutenant Martinez picks up another signal and they, they finally track down Pablo. So again, Pena is now kind of, at first seemingly in trouble for feeding um, Los Pepe's the information, so he gets he, he, he gets sent back. I mean, there's another there's another like CIA dude that has some relevance about the communists, but he seems to like know more than everybody else. And so he tells Javier Pena he's going back, and Pena does. They find Pablo the second time. They track him down. They there's a firefight. Uh, Limon is killed, Muerto, obviously. Um, they kill a couple more police officers, and then they do kill Pablo. So Pablo is dead. All of the people X'd out are dead. 
and the, fun, the absolute finale of the season is basically operations of some other government agency, American government agency, calling it Javier Pena. It's not sure if uh, Steve Murphy is going to have a major role for season three, but basically it looks like with Pablo dead, season three is going to focus on the reconfiguration of the Narcos, just just chessboard of players with the Cali cartel in season three. So throughout season two, the entire Pablo Escobar, the Medellin cartel, is uh, pretty much muerto. But they lose most of their guys in the big firefight when they're going to go try to fight the Cali cartel. So Yuri Moncada, she is like by Don Berna, basically told to just get the fuck out of Colombia. So she gets on a plane, and the some government agency is interviewing Pena about the Cali cartel. So that is the finale of El, All Fiend All, All Fiend Day Darkos Season Dos. No say season. Uh, I no, you say. But um, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You can follow the Spanish very fine. This, the, the translations, I just don't know why people don't translate word for word correctly. The context, when people are watching it, and you know, it says, it says claro, and it says all right or okay, it's always clear. It's all, it's, it's totally siempre clear. And so it just, it just makes no sense to change the words on the translations. Obviously, the Spanish is fine. The English translations is just is, is fucking mierda. So, but thoroughly enjoyed it. It doesn't, it doesn't detract from the entertainment value of the show just as a linguist. It's just like, why not translate what the words actually say? Might be useful. But um, you can certainly like it with the historical reference, like crime dramas. So, all, all in all, a great show. Highly recommend. And thanks for watching. And see you on the next one.